Summer is steadily approaching and things are starting to open up, including outdoor festivals, which I'm headed to one very soon. I'm going to put on an awesome outfit. I'll probably put beads in my beard, throw a snake around my neck and wander the festival all day. Nothing else really to consider there. Or is there? Today, we're talking about taking your snake outside. Welcome to the Green Room. I'm Bob Bledsoe. A couple of quick things first. Uh, number one, we're going to do another live stream. Uh, this coming Thursday, June 3rd at 5 p.m. Pacific time. So that's 8 p.m. Eastern, and there's probably a time or two in between Pacific and Eastern that you might fall into. Uh, so join me for the live stream. We're, what I'm going to try and do this time, because the first live stream I got a little bit um, distracted because there were so many comments and questions and things like that. Uh, and it was great to chat with everybody, but I want to have a theme and try to stick with the theme as best I can. So now that the channel is monetized and I can do super chats, what we're going to do is we'll have the theme. I will uh, try to stay on topic talking about the theme. And if there's a question that somebody really wants me to see or have answered, uh, throw up a super chat and it'll alert me and I'll look at that question. Otherwise, you guys can talk amongst yourselves and I'll look at the comments later. But that'll keep me from having to sort of read comments constantly while I'm trying to talk, which I get easily distracted, you guys. Um, so anyway, that'll be fun. That's this Thursday, June 3rd. Next on the agenda is fan mail. My favorite bit of fan mail ever just came in from friend of the channel, Jessica Perotti, who is a fantastic artist. And she sent me literally a box of rocks. But these rocks are ID markers for my snakes. Uh, so there's the inspector. She did one for all of them. And look at this. There's Delilah. She she made them. She, they're, you know, she, she did accurate depictions of each snake. Even look at look at this one. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go through all of them. You'll see them eventually. This is Freya. Is it focusing? Yeah. So Freya's a calico. She even got the little calico belly stuff on there. These are fantastic. I love them. So uh, there's a rock for each enclosure for each snake and um, they're going in the enclosures. Really excited about that. Thank you so much, Jessica. Okay, you guys, today we're gonna bring some snakes out of the house. Uh, you forgot to finish that sentence. That's my brother Kent, you guys, the cameraman and marketing department. Uh, Kent, what would the end of that sentence be? Today we're gonna bring some snakes out of the house and endanger the lives of the good people of Burbank, California. I think I can do it with zero fatalities. Come on, that's where I do Kent's Corner. The outside is supposed to be a snake-free zone. Okay, why don't you go and do a quick Kent's Corner before I bring any snakes out there? Okay, I'll go do it right now. But Kent, just FYI, all of the wild snakes in the world live outside. So in here we have a handful of snakes, but out there there are literally millions. So just... Hi, uh, welcome to the corner, Kent's corner. Today we're outside uh, looking for snakes. I don't see any, but that doesn't mean they're not here. There's millions of them out here, somewhere. Thank you for, thank you for watching Kent's Corner. Kent, that was one of your best episodes. You went herping. No, I didn't. If you go outside and look for reptiles in the wild, that's herping. That's what you did. Well, I wasn't doing it for fun. So for this talk about taking snakes outside, let's take a snake outside. That seems appropriate. Hey guys, I'm standing outside here uh, where I plan on having the snake later on today. I'm not gonna do it right now. It's only 72 degrees right now, which you would think that's pretty cool temperature for a snake. But let's look at surface temperatures really quick. Um, let's just see what the concrete surface is. I don't plan on putting the snake on the concrete, but let's just check it and see what it, what it says. 112, 100, let's see, pull it back, 
111 degrees, 112. 112 to 111 on the concrete. That's really hot for 72 degrees ambient air temperature. Now let's check this darker table. Uh, put it in the comments below what you think this table might come in at. I'm gonna shoot it right now. Pause and put your comment, your, your guess uh, at what it's gonna be. Here we go. Can you see that? I can't tell if you can see that or not. 158 degrees on that dark table that I'm planning to put the snake at. Now I'm gonna put a tablecloth or something over it, but I'm not gonna do that right now, obviously. I'll wait till it's in the shade and cooled off and then have plenty of covering over it so the snake is not sitting at 150 degrees. Uh, so that's why you have to be really careful where you put your animals, even your dogs. That's why dogs, the pads on, on dogs' feet get burned. Um, and also, if you're taking your snake somewhere, no reason not to take your temp gun Okay, you guys, I've brought Damara out here. Uh, today, I've got a padded thing for her to be on that I've checked the temps, and the temps are good uh, for that. But, you know, it's really important for the first thing to be aware of temperature, not just the ambient outside temperature, because really, they can handle cooler temperatures than what you normally would keep them in to live. Uh, but putting them on something that's a lot hotter than, uh, than you might imagine, is, it's, it's important to be aware of that. Um, if we feel, you know, if I feel this table at, at the table temperature and it feels warm to me, that means that that table is considerably higher or just higher than 98.6 degrees because that's what my hand is. If it feels cool to me, then it's lower than 98.6. 98.6 is pretty warm for them. So you don't want it warmer than your own body temperature, really. Uh, so, and again, cooler is a little, is, is fine first. It's probably, um, 74 right now, maybe a little bit cooler in the shade. And that's fine for her for a little bit to do a little video with me. Also, Damara is one of my breeding females. And normally you want to limit handling of breeding. Fe this isn't going to be a breeding video, but, uh, just a little side note. I believe she has absorbed her follicles this year because she's back on food and, um, not, not pairing with the inspector anymore. So I don't think she's gonna go this year. Let's talk about taking your snakes out in public first. I have a problem with this, uh, mainly for the snake, but also for other people. There are many, many people that are really afraid of snakes. And whether that fear is logical or not, it doesn't really matter. It's, it's a phobia. You probably have a phobia of something and you can relate to that. And I think it's important to not frighten people. Also, think about from your snake's perspective, they spend their life in their enclosure pretty much, or just in your house, and they kind of know that area. They know their enclosure, they kind of know your house, but when you take them out into a big open sky in an area they completely don't know, that's a little bit scary for them. If you throw them around your neck, and go to a festival, which I see a lot. That's a lot of sensory overload for a snake. And the problem is those keepers don't, probably don't have a good handle on, on the subtleties of snake behavior to, to understand that their snake is stressed. They figure, you know, the snake's not making any noise, obviously, and it's not trying to run away. So it must be fine with the situation. It's not necessarily. And, uh, you know, seeing a lot of people but remember that people to a snake are massive monsters. They don't know that these people aren't out to murder them. And just because they know that you're not, they don't know that other people aren't. So uh, it's a lot of really scary input for, for their brains to take them out into public. Um, and also for other people. You're not, you know, some people go, oh, I, I, I wanna take my snake into public so that, so that people that are afraid of snakes will learn to not be afraid. They're not gonna, you're not, you're not teaching them anything. Uh, what they're gonna do is you'll, you'll A, have a negative reaction where somebody will say something negative to you, which I get it, some people are looking for that kind of reaction. And if you are one of those people looking for a negative reaction from the public by bringing your snake out, maybe reconsider your uh, relationship to the world and, and people in general, <laughs> maybe don't go for 
uh, you know, negative attention. You don't, you don't need negative attention, right? So you're going to get some negative attention and you'll get some positive attention too. People will run up and go, oh, that's so cool. What a cool snake. Um, and, but most of the people that you pass at a festival, I'm thinking of like Renaissance festivals because I attend a lot of those and I see people with, with oftentimes ball pythons around their neck. Most of the people are going to walk by and kind of give them a side look and sort of shake their head, or not even shake their head, but in their mind, they're going, what is that person? Why, why are you bringing a snake out? Like, you know. So that person that walked by and just shook their head or whatever, they didn't learn anything. You didn't teach them anything. You didn't have an opportunity to because most of those people are not going to say anything to you. The only people that you might teach something to are the people that give you the positive reactions and come up and ask questions. But they're not the ones whose minds you're trying to change. So it's just not a good idea for the snake or for the unsuspecting people that you're passing by that maybe didn't want to see a big snake, you know? The other thing is, think about this. This, this, is re this is probably the most important thing, is that let's say that I have an extreme fear of snakes and I just see you walk by me with, with a ball python this size around your neck. Now this is a big ball python, but if I don't know anything about snakes and I'm afraid of them, I probably am not good at judging the size of an animal, right? So I'm gonna go, oh my God, that person has like a 15 foot Sn venomous snake around their neck, you know? I mean, think about how Kent reacts to snakes, right? There are people, other people that react like that. They just don't, they don't have the knowledge, right? So the other thing that I could do is I could go home because I look at that person and go, why is that even legal, right? So I go home and I write a letter and I go, dear representative in my area, I encountered 15 to 20 feet dot 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 venomous person was scaring people with snake why is this legal please make this so it's not legal and i write letters to my congressman or senator or whatever that's really bad because that's how legislation starts that makes it so that we can't keep really cool docile snakes it's a big problem please don't take your snake out in public it's just not necessary. One thing you need to ask yourself is, are you doing this for the benefit of you or for the benefit of your animal? If you're doing it for the benefit of the animal, you know now, or you probably already knew, that it's not benefiting your animal to take it out in public. It's going to scare them. If you're doing it for the benefit of you, it might be, if we're talking about outdoor festivals, it might be to up your cosplay game. Just up your cosplay game. Get attention that way. Don't throw a snake around your neck. They're, they're not fashion accessories. Um, you can get really good attention by having really great cosplay. Do that. Uh, don't use the snake. I have a million more things that I could say about that, but I think I've made my point. Now let's talk about taking a snake out, out of public, just into a park or into your backyard or something like that. That's a much better idea for certain snakes. One more thing that I forgot to mention, and I'm glad that I have my notes here, is um, you know you see people that have snakes that bring them to programs and they take them out in front of tons of children, which might be the most stressful human beings for a snake to be around at times. Um, but keep in mind that those are programs where, first of all, the snake has been acclimated a little bit to it, but it's also not a situation where they're bringing a snake um, out for five hours and wandering all over the place and they have tubs or some sort of enclosure for that snake to retreat to. So they're bringing out a snake, introducing it to the kids, talking about it a little bit, maybe letting the kids handle it for a little while, maybe 20 minutes, something like that. And then it's going back into a dark enclosure where they can be comfortable and, and relax. That's very different than tossing a snake around your neck and wandering through the public for hours on end. Okay, now let's talk about just bringing a snake outside like this, or, you know, normally I wouldn't put them on a table, I would be out in the grass or something like that. Uh, I don't have grass at, at my place, so I have to take my snakes to a park, which I did and we're gonna talk about. But let's first talk about just bringing a snake outside. You may find that the first time you bring your snake outside, they act a little bit stressed. They might tense up on you a little bit more than normal. They might start tongue flicking a little more than normal, acting a little bit erratic trying to hide their head like under themselves or whatever, under your arm, whatever they can do. And the reason is that your snake probably, uh, you know, it might be wild caught, I hope it's not wild caught, but uh, it probably was, was bred by a breeder and has lived in some sort of enclosure its whole life and gone from enclosure 
to enclosure at the breeders and then uh, you purchased it and now it's in your enclosure and it's never really been outside. And the big sky and the outdoors is a scary place. You know, people say, oh, they should, they should go outside because they, that's, where, that's where their natural habitat is. It is, but not to this particular snake. This snake lives in a small enclosure in a hide that they're very comfortable with. And, um, you know, if, if they were out in their natural habitat, they would be in a hide most of the time and then come outdoors when, when they could, but they would be used to being outdoors. So keep that in mind. It's, I'm not saying it's not good to bring your snake outside because I think it is. I think there can be some benefits, but some, with certain snakes, you've got to be really careful because they just have never done it before. And, and it's a scary new environment. They're, you know, the only thing that they're thinking about when you put them in a new environment is, are there predators? So, and that means, you know, going, if, if they live in your living room and they're used to being in your living room and then all of a sudden you take them into the bedroom and put them on your bed, that's their thought. Are there predators on this bed? You know, because it's a new place. So certainly the outdoors is something like that too. Damara here has spent a lot of time outdoors and she knows it a lot. That's why she's super relaxed and, and just being very calm. Uh, and that's why I chose her for this uh, little thing. If I brought the inspector out, he'd be acting a lot different. He is not comfortable with the outside. So some snakes are gonna be okay with it, some won't. Here are some things that you need to be uh, thinking about, be concerned about. Um, chances are you're gonna bring them to a grassy area and put them in grass. You need to make sure that that grass has not been treated recently uh, with pesticides or with uh, chemical fertilizers. And if you're taking them to a public, you know, you'll know if it's your yard, but if you're taking them to a public park, a lot of places, I know in Los Angeles, they have to put flags up and, to, and like warn you that, that this, is, this grass has been recently treated. But I know there are a lot of places that don't have to do that. So you gotta be really careful. Maybe you gotta call the city or something like that before you do it. Um, or just don't do it if, if there's a chance that there could be pesticides. So that's something to worry about. The other thing is um, dogs. You know, if, if there are people that have dogs off leash, we all know how fast a dog can be. And, uh, you know, a dog could see a snake moving in the grass and just run up really fast before anybody can do anything. And the same with birds of prey. You know, especially if you have a smaller one, I wouldn't be as worried about like a hawk coming down to try to get Damara. But if I had one of my babies out there, um, some birds of prey are really bold and could swoop down. So you want to stay very close to them at all times. You don't have to always be looking up at the sky, but if you're right there next to them, chances are they won't. Uh, just don't let them wander too far. Again, if you're at a park or maybe in your yard, but uh, mainly more of a concern at a park, go for holes. You know, some of you have snakes that as soon as they see something dark that they can crawl into, they're going to do it pretty quickly. They're going to move faster than they normally move to get into that dark space. And again, I'll use the inspector as an example. He's one of them. If he saw a hole in a, in a yard, if I brought him outside and put him in the grass and he found a hole, he'd be down it in no time. And real tough to get your snake out of a gopher hole. So just be careful of any holes in the ground. Hey guys, Future Bob here, back with another fancy hat from the future, but also with some information that Past Bob forgot to mention that I realized as I was editing this. One of the main concerns that people have with taking their snake outside is that they're gonna get mites. And that's actually not a concern that's nearly as, as big as the other concerns. And that's because snake mites are specific to snakes. They're not just random mites that are all over the place outside. If you were to take your snake in an area where other wild snakes commonly were, um, like put them in or around a snake den, chances are those wild snakes probably have mites and you could get mites. But, you know, if you're taking them into your backyard or into just the middle of a grassy park, the chances of your snake picking up a snake mite from the middle of the grass is pretty slim. Um, you've got a better chance of getting mites from walking into a pet store that has snakes and getting mites on your clothes and then bringing those back to your home and transferring those to your snake. The other things that I mentioned are concerns and you've gotta be worried about that, but I wouldn't be worried too much about snake mites. We already talked about heat. Now I, I brought my snakes out. I'll show you some B-roll of this. I, I brought three of my younger girls out to the park the other day for the first time. This is not something I usually do because it's a production to get everything together and bring the snakes out and make sure I'm in an area that's that doesn't have a lot of people and dogs running around. If I had a front yard or a backyard, I would do this all the time and my snakes would be used to going outside. 
but I don't, so it's it's not as um, it's it's easier for me to to find enrichment for them inside than than outside. I'll bring them out and handle them in in the sun, but not crawling around as much. So this time at the park, I I brought them out and I checked the heat on the grass. Once I put up the the playpen, I checked the heat and it was considerably hotter immediately in the sunny part of the playpen on the on the sort of canvas. So you gotta really be careful of that. So bring your temp gun. Hey mamas, you doing all right? You trying to do some exploring on the dirty table? So the idea with taking them to the, to the park other than just to get some B-roll for this particular video is I wanted to do, do a photo shoot in the grass with them. And this was their first time being in the grass and it was such a weird new environment to them to be on grass that the shots that I got, I, I got a couple of shots of Evie that look really like, they look like she's really intimidating. She almost looks like a rattlesnake about to strike. But what she was doing was like being careful that she didn't want to touch her face to the blades of grass. So it put her in that position of sort of curled up and being like, I am not comfortable with this. The other thing, you know, it's funny, I, I would have brought four of the girls out, but but um, Lydia Dietz was in shed. So I was like, oh, I'll just leave her. But then when I brought the other three out, I realized that Molly Malone was also in shed, like fully in blue and I didn't notice. And uh, Delilah was also in shed. So I brought two girls out that were in shed. Not a good time to introduce them to grass. None of them were comfortable with the situation. They were a lot more comfortable in the playpen, but the grass was not, and I, I didn't, I also didn't spend a lot of time. I got a few shots, um, realized that Molly was not gonna be my best photographic subject because she was fully in blue. And uh, so I got a couple shots and, and then, you know, gathered everything up and, and went home. That's the other thing, you don't need to spend a lot of time outside with them just because you've, just because you've taken the time to get your stuff together and bring them to a park or whatever doesn't mean that you need to spend two hours. Uh, they don't want to spend two hours. You know, they might want to explore around a little bit and then they're done. So don't make it a, don't make it a big long production like you would if you were taking your toddler to the beach or something like that. What else was I going to talk about here, you guys? So again, if you're, if you are taking your snake out for the first time, you know, do, do a thing where you don't just plop them down on the grass. That's going to be really scary. It, it will. It seems it, that seems silly, but because you know they're snakes and they should be outdoors, but it's scary for them. New environment, totally new feeling on their belly of grass. That's such a weird thing. So have them in your hand and let them just start to explore, like Damara's doing right now. She's just kind of exploring her area. Let them do that and let them crawl off your hand on their own. You'll find that that your snake is going to have a much better experience. This is like in my last video last week when I talked about having the inspector crawl out of his enclosure and into the playpen on his own. That's a way better experience than if I just plop him down in the playpen. He gets real scared if I do that. It's it's too, oh, she's gonna spill my coffee. Um, it's it's too much for him to, to just be placed in, in something. Hey mama, will you come back over here please? Thanks. I think that's it. I think we basically covered it. There There are some things to be aware of that we covered when you bring your snake outside. Please don't bring your snakes in public. It's not, it's not good for the hobby. Not only is it not good for, for the snakes or the people that are scared of snakes, it's not good for the hobby um, to be out there scaring people with your snakes. So uh, even though you don't have a scary snake, I know you don't, I get it, uh, but not everybody is gonna be of that opinion. If there's anything that I missed, put it in the comments below. Um, I'm sure there are other things to be aware of that I didn't think about. Uh, so give me your experiences of taking your snakes outside. Let me know what I potentially missed so that we can have a running list of things to be aware of when bringing your snakes out. It can be for the right snake and in the right situation, it can be a really great enrichment opportunity for them, especially the, the ones that are used to being out and about. Join me on Thursday if you can for the live stream. Again, I'm gonna enable super chats so that I can stay on topic. I think the topic is gonna be the bioactive vivarium. Um, but we'll see, I might change my mind on that. Uh, but you can super chat any question you want about any subject, doesn't even have to be about snakes, and I'll answer that, otherwise I'll try to stay on topic. And uh, now I gotta go inside and convince Kent that it's safe to go outdoors so he can go home. Wish me luck. <laughs>
I live next to the Burbank Airport, you guys. And shooting outside is so difficult because I'm constantly having to hold for planes. Still holding. Do you want to hang out around my neck for a little bit? 